For months now, space fans have been keeping a close eye on SpaceX, waiting for the next big step in the Starship program. The gap since the last test flight has only made the anticipation stronger. Flight 9 wrapped up almost three months ago, and just a few weeks later, the Ship 36 incident set things back. But now, things are moving forward again. Booster 16 has arrived at the launch pad, showing that the company is deep into final preparations. The target launch date, Sunday, August 24th, has been mentioned repeatedly by Elon Musk, and at this point, it looks more realistic than ever. This time, SpaceX wants to confirm all systems work together while testing new ideas that will influence Starship's future, taking on challenges with both risk and reward. One of the main experiments for Flight 10 involves a change to how the super-heavy booster will land. Normally, the final landing burn uses three of the inner engines to slow the rocket before it touches down. This time, SpaceX plans to shut off one of those engines on purpose, leaving only two active for the final phase. At first, this may sound counterintuitive. Having more engines running provides more power and an extra layer of safety. But this decision is intentional. It's about testing what happens when things don't go perfectly. Here's the basic sequence. Once the booster separates from the upper stage and completes its role in the mission, it will begin re-entering the atmosphere. A large group of engines, 13 in total, will fire to slow the descent during the first phase of landing. Then, for the final approach, only two central engines will ignite instead of three. This will guide the booster, control its speed, and position it for a safe splashdown at sea. The idea is to learn whether two engines alone can deliver enough braking force and steering control for a reliable landing. If the answer is yes, this creates a valuable backup. In the future, if one engine fails during a real mission, the booster might still land successfully without being forced to abort. For now, these trials will be done over water to avoid risk to people or equipment. There's also a fuel efficiency angle. Every phase of a super heavy flight consumes enormous amounts of propellant. If SpaceX can safely land with fewer engines, they can save fuel and potentially allocate more of it to other critical phases or to carry heavier payloads. It's a test that combines safety redundancy with operational efficiency. Alongside the two-engine landing attempt, another major trial in Flight 10 is the controlled flip maneuver after stage separation. When the booster detaches from Starship, it needs to turn around for its return trip. In earlier flights, this flip was more of a free spin that had to be corrected later, wasting fuel. Starting with Flight 9, SpaceX began actively guiding the flip using small adjustments from the ship's engines combined with refinements to hot staging. This keeps the booster already facing the right way for re-entry, cutting down on wasted propellant and improving efficiency. Flight 10 will continue testing this controlled flip. The better SpaceX can align the booster early, the less correction is needed later. This means more fuel left for other tasks, which could lead to bigger payload capacities in the future. There's also a third key experiment, changing the re-entry angle. In Flight 9, the booster came in at such a steep angle that structural parts, particularly the fuel transfer tube, were stressed beyond their limits. This caused the booster to fail before splashdown. For Flight 10, the angle will still be steeper than earlier flights, but not as extreme as Flight 9. This is a step toward finding the balance between challenging the hardware and keeping it intact. A steeper re-entry angle shortens the distance between separation and landing, saving fuel that would otherwise be used for a longer glide path. That saved propellant can be used for other phases or carried as reserve. As future boosters, like the planned version 3, are built with stronger structures, SpaceX can gradually push the re-entry angles back toward the design limits. These tests fit SpaceX's approach, push hardware to extremes, find weaknesses, and refine the design through iteration. Flight 10's goal is to see how the system handles different conditions and use that data to make future missions safer and more reliable, ultimately enabling Starship to catch boosters, save fuel, and survive unexpected issues. In practical terms, the timeline for Flight 10's key moments is short. Most of the critical events, from liftoff to booster splashdown, will happen in the first seven minutes. 
In that brief window, SpaceX will test ideas that could define the future of heavy lift rocket recovery. A smooth controlled flip, a successful two-engine landing burn, and a stable descent at a refined re-entry angle would all mark major progress. When the countdown begins on August 24th, the world will be watching closely. In just a few minutes after launch, SpaceX will attempt a series of moves that no other rocket program is trying at this scale. Whether all of them succeed or not, Flight 10 will move the Starship program another step forward toward its ultimate goal, a fully reusable high-capacity spacecraft ready for missions far beyond Earth. The upgrades and maneuvers SpaceX is testing on Super Heavy right now are shaping the next stage of Starship's development. Every experiment, from the active flip to the dual-engine landing attempt, is not just a one-time trial. These are steps in a plan to increase how far Starship can go, how much it can carry, and how reliably it can be reused. One of the most important long-term targets for SpaceX is to significantly increase the payload Starship can bring to orbit. From the start, Elon Musk and his team envisioned Starship as a rocket capable of transporting record-breaking amounts of cargo into space. Early designs called V-1 and V-2 aimed for over 100 tons to orbit. The planned V-3 model pushed that goal to more than 200 tons. The current Starship is still short of these numbers, but SpaceX is working toward them through both hardware and operational improvements. Increasing payload capacity is not just about making the rocket bigger or adding more fuel. SpaceX is focusing on saving fuel during flight, so more of the total launch weight can go toward cargo. Techniques being tested now, such as the active flip maneuver, higher re-entry angles, and landings using only two engines, all help reduce fuel use. Every bit of fuel saved means more weight can be dedicated to payload. This has huge value for long-term plans like building a permanent presence on Mars. Sending more mass per launch means fewer missions, lower costs, and faster construction of bases. The same logic applies to building infrastructure on the moon. For deep space missions, heavy payload capacity is essential. Instead of launching many smaller loads, Starship could transport large habitat modules, power systems, or surface equipment in fewer flights. This would speed up progress for lunar bases or Mars colonies. Even for projects closer to Earth, like large space stations or big satellites, more payload per flight means faster assembly and fewer launches. The U.S. military has also expressed interest in Starship's potential for point-to-point -point transport on Earth, moving heavy cargo anywhere on the planet in under an hour. In all these cases, being able to carry more is not just beneficial, it's required. Landing technology is the other major area of focus. The dual-engine landings and high-angle re-entries being tested now are designed to make boosters more fuel-efficient and allow them to land farther from the launch site. This flexibility could make missions more versatile, but it requires highly reliable engines and precise control. Engines can fail or run unevenly, so proving that a booster can still land with two engines instead of three is a critical safety step. The active flip maneuver is another key innovation. By rotating the booster into the correct landing orientation without using extra fuel for thrusters, it reduces weight and complexity. This is especially important for SpaceX's plan to catch Super Heavy directly with the Mechazilla Tower arms. The more stable and predictable the booster's position is during descent, the easier and safer it will be to capture. If successful, this approach will cut down on wear and tear from ocean landings and make the rocket faster to reuse. All these landing and maneuver tests are leading toward a realistic goal, catching a returning Super Heavy booster directly on the launch tower. This once seemed futuristic, but SpaceX is already gathering the data needed to make it possible. These upgrades and trials are also paving the way for the Super Heavy V3 version. The first V3 booster, called B-18, is close to completion and will soon begin cryogenic testing at the improved Massey test site. V3 comes with several major changes. The hot staging system, which allows the upper stage to ignite before separation, will now be entirely mounted on the booster. This design is simpler, cheaper, and better able to handle the extreme heat and pressure during staging. The grid fins have been redesigned to be larger, reshaped, and placed in better positions. 
These changes will improve control during descent, reduce interference with engine exhaust, and make landings more accurate. The engines themselves are also getting a major upgrade. The new Raptor 3 engines are lighter, produce more thrust, and are more reliable. They no longer need protective heat shields or an outer engine ring, making the booster less complex and easier to maintain. This should make fuel-saving landing techniques, like the dual-engine approach, even more practical. The results from these tests will influence not only how Starship is built in the next few years, but also how quickly humanity can move toward large-scale space operations. Whether for Mars, the Moon, or Earth-to-Earth -Earth transport, the ability to lift heavy payloads and recover boosters with minimal turnaround is central to making space travel routine and affordable.